friends. Looks like the sun is coming up. Beauteous, beauteous. We're gonna knock that out. And what do I gotta dump here? Mm, let us dump. Wow, kind of a tough choice. I really want to keep all this stuff. Let's drop the coal. And get those. And we need to get it that there so we can do that and then jump on him and let us blow this popsicle stand well actually it's not a popsicle stand it's a 7-eleven let's uh see what we can do about getting this fella back home and getting this obsidian back and you guys ought to know this route by now like I say, I, I was going to leave him behind, but there's so many horses in the area. And if I was going to leave him be, Now listen, you. Pardon me. What part of you're supposed to be following me home do you not understand? Are you stronger than my horse? You shouldn't be. And what happened to our other lead? Darn it. That's not good. Losing the lead is not a good thing. Oh, there it is. And say, losing the lead is not a good thing. Let's change the appropriate view so we can make sure we've got him. I thought about leaving him behind so that if a visitor came along, there'd be a horse available. But the whole thing is there's herds of horses here, of course. Come on, dude. There's uh, herds of horses here, so that's the first thing. The second thing is if I did that, I'd also have to, you know, in good conscience, leave behind a saddle and lead and all of that. And I just can't afford that right now, honestly. Cannot afford to do that right now. Let's go into the water. Thank you. All the lovely flowers. But yeah, there there are so many horses around that I'm just going to take them on home with me. And like I say, me and Hawk, we kind of like the, the slow horses. They keep us from... Uh, whoa, do not go in the lava. Come on. Thank you. Um, they, they keep us from running off the edges of things and killing ourselves. <laughs> Yeah, I think that the reason I think it's so funny is because here I am going, I need a slow horse in Minecraft so I don't hurt myself. And, you know, back in my younger days, I used to do, you know, 130 miles an hour down the highway on a 1965 electric glide without a second thought. Of course, I uh, reaped the rewards of that, too. I was uh, on Highway 90, which is in southern Minnesota. It runs east-west. And I was running across uh, Interstate 90, coming home from work one day. And uh, I was riding my electric glide, and it had these uh, extended invader forks, and it had uh, ape hangers, you know, which are handlebars to stay real high. And with invader forks, um, when they get real long like that, what happens is, as you're riding along, if you hit a bump, your front tire comes up. It's just kind of the the result of of having those those. And so a lot of people, including including my uncle, who was the one that I got the motorcycle from, they used to reverse their forks. Um, even though they were meant to, they had they went down and they had this curve at the bottom and it was supposed to kind of be reminiscent of a J that had been tilted 45 degrees, but instead we'd flip that over. And what that would do is that would reduce the amount of bounce we'd get off those invader forks. But you could, but just the problem with forks is, you know, when you turn the wheel, um, because of the length and the angle, what can happen is it almost lays the wheel flat. It can, it can be really hard on, on the the tires but anyway so i'm flying down highway 90 and and i mean i am a zooming i want to get home i am sick of my smelly evil job at the pork packing plant used to work at farmstead foods in albert lee minnesota i was on my way back to minnesota lake minnesota and apparently a gravel truck had been along and it had hit this bump and when it bumped it had thrown a little gravel down well, I come along, and I knew that bump was there, and I was ready for it, you know, because, like I say, with them invader forks, even reverse, you really got to watch what you're doing. Hey, now, what, speaking of watching what you're doing, you're supposed to be keeping up with me. Thank you. Um, and so I was pay, trying to pay attention. You know, you don't <laughs> you don't want to go down at, at, you know, giant speeds. And anyway, I hit that bump, and, and my front tire bounced up, of course, and, and not much because my forks were reversed. But when it come down, it landed on the gravel patch. And when it touched that gravel patch, 
the handlebars just kind of turn sideways on me and of course ape hangers as the name implies they they sit up really really high and um am i going the wrong way i really get this feeling like i have taken a wrong turn Hmm. That's West. Well, okay, we should be going the right way. But anyway, so what happened is, uh, oh yeah, I gotta, I gotta go through the savannah. That's right. That's right. Um, when when my front tire came down on that gravel patch, the the tire twisted. And when the tire twisted, of course, those big ape hangers with the with the type of torque they have on them because of of the length, number one of the uh, forks, and because of the shape of the ape hangers, number two, it just turned sideways in my hands. I mean, it was like like one second I was holding the handlebars, and the next second I just there was no handlebars. And what happened is when when they cranked all the way hard to the right, the front of the bike started to shoot hard right and then of course the that old 65 electric glide with those extended forks couldn't take that stress and so instead the bike went over on its side now i'm going to tell you something i'm saying bike and i i feel bad saying bike because i'm only doing it because it seems like that helps people understand what i'm talking about back in the day you didn't call your your motorcycle a bike you called it a scooter a bike was something you pedaled. A scooter was something that had a motor. And the only difference between scooters was how big they were, you know. So anyway, <laughs> when this happened and I went, it started falling over to the right. And I feel it going down. And I'm doing about 75 miles an hour because that's the speed limit through there. And as it's starting to fall down, all of a sudden, everything just kind of went into slow motion. And I took my right leg because the bike was, was going over on its right side. I took my right leg and I swung it up over the scooter and I ended up with both of my legs on the left side of the scooter with the scooter laying on its right side spinning in a circle sliding down the the highway and I'm holding on for dear life I've got I've got my my fingers curled underneath the edge of the the seat you know because it was about the only thing I could get a hold of that wasn't red hot all right, here we go. Now we're back where we're going. And uh, it's spinning down along, and it was so weird because it was all in slow motion. It was just just as the bike lazily turned a full 360 degrees, and the sparks were flying, and I knew that one of two things was going to happen. Either I was going to spin and end up across in oncoming traffic um, because there was just a, a shallow ditch in between the, the, the lanes, or I was going to end up in the ditch. And trust me, I was praying for ditch. And right about the time that I had the realization of where it was all going and praying for the ditch is when I hit the ditch. And uh, what happened is when the ape hangers went off the, the blacktop and hit the gravel, um, I'm trying to demonstrate it with my hands, that's silly. Um, but when they when the, it went off the blacktop and the, and the right side of those ape hangers hit the gravel, that's it. it, the bike flipped, it threw me, I went flying through the air, and tumbled over and over and over again and came to a stop. Thankfully, very thankfully, number one, I was wearing a helmet, even though at that time it wasn't popular, everybody was like, dude, man, don't wear a helmet, that's stupid, man, that's lame. Um, I wore a helmet, and I'm glad I did, because I'm quite sure it saved my life. And uh, the the scooter flipped, I went flying through the air and rolled over and over and over again. And I got another call coming in. Good gracious me. All right, guys. I'm going to have to ignore this call because if I stop here, we're going to have nothing but dead horses. Oh, no, you don't. No, no. Swim, 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 swim. <laughs> oh, goodness, what a day. Frustrations galore. All right, you. I'm going to have to. And, you know, I'm one of those people that's basically of the opinion that if you call me, and you're not willing to tell me who you are, I probably don't want to talk to you. So like this, it's just a phone number, I don't know. And not the slightest idea who they are. Aha! A message. Now, that's unique, see, because um, oddly, oddly enough, my cell phone seems to only ever get sales calls. Come on in, guys. Come on through here. Come on. You can do it. One at a time. That's right. Somebody's got to give way here now. There you go. 
Come on. Good job. But somebody left a message. You know, I hate that. People call and call and call and call and call. I'll have the same number call me ten freaking times. And you know what? When they do, if I don't know it, I don't answer it. Because if it's important, you leave a darn message. You say, pardon me. It's just come to our attention that your house is on fire. You know, an important message. Come on. Come on. Oh, for goodness sake, you guys. All right, well, what we'll do is we'll attach those there. There you go. We'll come around. We'll give them a little helping hand. Good job, guys. All right. Yep. So at least this time somebody left a message, which means I can I can figure out who in the heck it is that's been trying to call me. I think it's probably a sales call because it's one of those things where it's the same area code, but the first three digits are like all the various inversions of three particular numbers, and then the last four digits are always the same. And that looks pretty much like spoofing to me. Yeah, Mr. Skeddy. Mr. Skeddy. Confuse you all over the place. Yeah. Yeah, what you gonna do when you got crazy feet? Crazy feet. What you gonna do when you got crazy feet? Crazy feet. He says, I'm gonna shoot you in your crazy feet. That's funny. He's shooting me in the ankles. All right, you. Enough. 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 It was amusing while it lasted. All right, guys. We'll tell you what. Head on up here. I can't do that in this view. There we go. There. Now I can go. Here we go. All right, guys. Well, I'd like to thank you for joining me. Whoa, no. What the heck? Oh, I almost started live streaming. <laughs> I should live stream. That's what I should do. I haven't live streamed in ages. All right, guys. Well, I'd like to on uh, Delacaba Presents. Let's see if we can adjust our view here. I'm pushing every button, but, you know, I used to be a hero like you once, but then I took an arrow to the knee. I can't believe I just did that. Holy crap, we need to eat. All right, guys. Well, so, um... Oops, somebody's talking to me. Jeez. All right, guys. Well, here's here's a Minecraft high five with a stake in your face. Um, thank you for joining me for Let's Play Minecraft 1.8, the Cyber Dog Nation server. And uh, as you can see, we have found our taiga. We have got some horses. We now can get to an enchanting portal or an enchanting table in a, in a portal. I'm just sorry, guys. I'm just so excited. I'm so excited. Finally, <laughs> enchanting. I hate being in an enchanted stuff. I need me my luck of the sea. I'm out. Peace.